And that will be an important part of, of our discussion. Some information so that you understand um, where this all comes from. This two-thirds vote is a product, really, of three different measures, Prop 13 being the first, but Prop 218 and Prop 26 being the, being the next, each one incrementally uh, putting a two-thirds requirement on more and more part of the voter approval process. But the key thing for my purposes for you to recognize is that each time there is a declining base of support where Prop 13 started with almost 63% support. By 2010, Prop 26 was down to a bare majority um, in its passage. Now what that means to, what should mean to you and to us, is that either the attitudes of the voters of California or the demographics of the voters of California are changing and that it's not the same environment or the same voting population that initially voted on Prop 13. And we have seen changes. The school community um, in 2000 put a measure on the ballot, Prop 39, that 53% of the voters supported and now school bonds are approved with 55%. And since that time, 271 measures have passed. Of those, 148 of them would have failed if they still would require a two-thirds vote. In transportation, we have tw had 22 measures pass with two-thirds, but 10 more would have passed since 2002 if we'd have had the same 55% standard that school bonds now have. We have seen some some recent polling, now uh, this is, there is other polling that's not as encouraging as this, so that needs to be acknowledged, but there have been recent polling that gives us reason for optimism about the voter response to a proposal to lower the voter threshold. Number one, 86% of the voters in, in, in all of Southern California said that they would trust local governments more um, to implement key programs and that more control should be given to local governments and less to the state government. Um, in addition, we had a, we've had recently as 2009 on a very comprehensive measure to lower the voter threshold for a wide ranging set of agencies, a 55-38 yes-no polling. In fact, in last April, when voters of the six county Southern California region um, were asked, 64% said they would agree to lowering the voter threshold for transportation measures. Now, Southern California is about half of the state. On the presidential race, the governor's race, it votes within one point of the state as a whole, so it extrapolates reasonably well to the state as a whole. Now, I have to acknowledge that there are other polls that are not as encouraging as this, all of them, though, showing uh, majorities, near majority support. We are nearing a threshold where this matter can be taken to the voters successfully. And we have seen other good signs of, am I going backwards? <laughs> yes? Well. All right, so in, in 2012, there was, well, let's see. All right, my remote's not working. He's going to handle it. All right, in 2012, there was a proposal um, initiated by the Kern County Council of Governments to lower the voter threshold uh, to 55%. Um, introduced into legislation by Henry Perea, uh, an assembly member from Fresno. Now one of the key things that you should be thinking about here, here is, is Kern County your typical bastion of liberal democratic support? When the Kern County Council of Governments is saying we want to lower the voter threshold, that should suggest to you that this is an issue that's not only of concern to the urban environments of Los Angeles, San Francisco, etc., but even in the Central Valley and the communities of Central Valley, there are people who are thinking it's time uh, for a change. Um, during that discussion, Mobility 21, which is a very influential and large coalition in Southern California of 
of Transportation Commissions and Chambers of Commerce endorse that measure, showing business community support for a change as well. So we begin to see, I think, that the moment is, ri is arriving when we should be uh, thinking about uh, bringing to the voters this kind of change. Alameda County and uh, LA County's vote shows the need. The polling shows that it's a very promising possibility, support from non-democratic constituencies. And now there's even the possibility of the two-thirds vote in the legislature needed to, make, uh, to bring this to the voters. It would be a majority vote of voters required, not two-thirds, just 50% of the voters in California could make this change. So we need to all think about whether now is the moment, whether you are the coalition that's going to bring this forward. There are at least four bills in the legislature um, that would propose to do this. Two of them are transportation only. One of them, Lonnie Hancock, is more comprehensive. Cities, counties, school boards, uh, water agencies, etc. And our own uh, local Bob Bluenfield has a measure that is uh, transportation agencies and cities and counties. So there is, a, there is a growing momentum for this idea and a very, I think, very positive debate about the prospects. What we need to do is to build the coalition, identify the smart measure, you know, be, do the careful kind of polling, and make decisions when we get close to the time um, to deadline time whether to go forward with this measure for the 2014 ballot. We must not be foolish about this because this may be um, a very important moment. 2014 may or may not be the right moment. 2016 may be the right moment. It is, us, it is for us to make the strategic decisions. It is for you in the room to help us do that.